I seem to be on a real one versus all hidden movement games kick, having recently done videos for Fury of Dracula and Hunt for the Ring, and I even talked quite a bit about Spectre Ops in my Hunt for the Ring video. But now I have obtained Spectre Ops Broken Covenant, a standalone expansion for Spectre Ops, and it has gone from being my favorite game of this genre to being in my top 10 favorite games of all time. One of these days I'm going to get around to making that video, but in the meantime I'm not here specifically to talk about Spectre Ops, but to walk you through a full playthrough of the game that I kept track of the last time I played Spectre Ops with the Broken Covenant expansion. Before I dive into things, let's talk about some physical component things. First of all, I got to make my customary disclaimer that I have added a bunch of custom components to this game in order to enhance the play experience. I've made my foam board screen that I tend to make for games of this sort when I'm doing hidden movement stuff, and I've added a bunch of other stuff that you'll see as this video progresses. One unfortunate thing about the physical production of this game is that the company that made it made some errors in terms of things that were printed on the board itself. There are seven spaces on the board that were misprinted and I had to write to the company to get this little sticker sheet that used to have seven stickers on it that I've peeled off of here and placed on the board to mark the spaces correctly. The couple that might cause a bit of confusion during gameplay potentially are one space that doesn't have a letter and number grid location on the space which might leave the hunters confused as to whether it's a space they can walk on or not. And the other is one of the goal spaces is mismarked on the map. However, it's marked correctly on the agent's notepad, as are all the rest of the spaces. So everything on the agent's notepad is marked correctly, but the player board somehow got some errors during the production process. So the stickers have corrected all of that. And if anything else comes up, I'll just mention it as we go here. So in terms of the gameplay that you're about to watch, what I did was I played a two-player game with a friend of mine. We played Spectre Ops with the Broken Covenant expansion elements, and I actually just wrote down every single thing we did throughout the game so that I could come back and record me doing a full replay of the game in the chronological order that the events happened in order to give you a really good feel for how the game plays with these new game elements. Even though there were only two of us, we played it as a four-player game so that my friend who was playing as the Hunters could play with three Hunters, and I as the Agent would start with five items as well as two extra hit points from a character. In addition to that, there are two extra exit spaces on the board for a four-player game. And all of the agent's goal locations on the map are hidden. They're not known to the hunting team. Before I start the gameplay, I'm going to have a quick look at the agent that I chose, their abilities, and the starting equipment that I chose to begin the game with, and I'm going to go over the hunters that were chosen by my friend and their abilities and how all their new stuff comes into play in the game. If you want to skip all that and jump straight to the gameplay, just go to the minute and the second mark to jump right into the gameplay. But first I'm going to take you behind my screen to show you my starting agent stuff. So again, a lot of what you're looking at is custom made by me, including this little double-sided magnetic movement sheet for the agent and the little movement recording sheet there and obviously the entire screen. But what I want to have a look at is the actual agent. I chose to play as Panther, who is one of the new agents in the expansion. Now, the new agents I didn't find to be overly inspiring. They had just mildly interesting abilities. But Panther's here I kind of liked. Panther has a shadow step ability that says, when placing your last scene marker, if the Panther moved three or fewer spaces, you may place it in a space adjacent to where the last scene marker would normally be placed. So she has a little bit of trickery up her sleeve. 
In terms of the five items I chose to have her start with, normally when I play as the agent, I will choose one or two adrenal surges just to have that really fast movement capability when it's most needed in the game. However, this time around, I thought I'd go with the whole trickery and subterfuge theme and pick some things that allowed me to hide my location. So I chose to start with two smoke grenades as well as two stealth fields. And finally, there's a special item specifically for Panther that is a smoke dagger that says I can reveal the card, then choose a hunter within four spaces. That hunter loses vision until the end of this turn. So I'm really trying to remain hidden and be sneaky with this character. And you'll see how that ended up playing out for me. All right, now we're with Team Hunter, and my friend chose to play three brand new Hunters from the Broken Covenant expansion, and this is where the new expansion really shines. All of the new Hunters have really interesting abilities and really clever ways that they can use in order to sort of triangulate and determine the position of the agent. In addition to that, my friend chose to play with the new car, which is the Interceptor. It has a movement of 12 spaces instead of 10, with the original vehicle in the base game. And it has this optic alarm whereby when there are no hunters in the vehicle, the optic alarm is automatically activated. If the agent moves into or through line of sight of the vehicle, the agent must announce that the vehicle alarm has been triggered. So in that manner, the vehicle acts like another hunter in terms of the line of sight situation. In addition to that, there's a special edge case for the puppet that says if the puppet is in play, the puppet has vision as though he's in the vehicle. In this game, the puppet is not in play, so that can be ignored for this gameplay. So for the actual hunters themselves, we have the tracker here. The tracker has Rover, who is a pet, which is very cool. Rover is the tracker's pet, and Rover moves after the tracker moves in a game turn. When the agent crosses Rover's line of sight, or is in Rover's line of sight at the end of Rover's turn, the agent player must announce that Rover is barking. If Rover lands on an agent, you roll a die on a result of four or higher, the agent loses one hit point. And the tracker has a cool ability called Catch the Scent that says you may use Catch the Scent instead of moving the tracker. The agent player must tell you if the tracker or rover is closer to the agent or if they are the same distance. So that's another neat way of determining where the agent might be. The judge here has clairvoyance. Instead of moving, the judge will choose a direction, northeast, northwest, southeast, or southwest. If the agent or decoy is located in that direction, the agent must announce you sense the agent. If the agent is directly north, south, east, or west, you will be unable to sense them. And then there's a second ability called Judgment that says when the judge deals damage to an agent, the agent becomes fatigued, which is another aspect of the Broken Covenant expansion. If an agent becomes fatigued, they cannot use their special abilities until they move two or fewer spaces in order to rest. Then the fatigue is removed and they have access to their special abilities again. And then finally we have the Watcher, who is actually a visibly disabled person, which I think is really super cool. The Watcher here has a surveillance ability that says the Watcher will start the game with three camera tokens. Again, these are custom tokens that I've made, not the original cardboard camera tokens. So after moving the Watcher, you may place a camera on his location in any orientation. And in addition to his normal vision, the Watcher also has vision from the cameras in the direction that each one is pointing. When all three cameras are on the board, if the watcher wishes to place a camera, they simply remove a previously placed camera and moves it to his current location. And then finally, the watcher's chair here has an ability called full speed that says when the watcher moves only on the road, he may move up to five spaces, which is pretty neat for him. So that's the hunting team, and while I have you at this angle, I'm going to show you another enhancement I made for the hunters, and that is these cubes that I've placed on the board. I've placed a yellow cube in each of the potential goal locations, and a green cube in each of the new supply cache locations that are new to this Broken Covenant expansion, and that way the hunters can have a look at the board and tell at a glance where the key spaces that the agent is trying to get to are on the board. 
So now you've been introduced to the characters in the game, let's get into the gameplay itself. All right, we're set up and ready to go here. So with the Broken Covenant expansion, the agent player is going to start on space M1. And I'm going to leave the figure on the board for the sake of this video so you can keep track of where I'm moving Panther. However, I'll try to remember to keep this little clear plastic thing around her when she is not visible to the hunters, just as an indication that she's at that location but not currently visible. And then when the hunters can see her, I'll try to remember to take this off to indicate that. With three hunter players in play, as usual, they will start in the vehicle. And with three hunters, the vehicle is going to start here on space K24. And this is one of the last things I need to find an upgrade for as a cool little car miniature or something to replace this cardboard token. But anyhow, we have the car here on K24 to start the game. And we are ready to go. So turn one, I moved Panther over to I2, which is over this way and then Tracker drove the vehicle to H14, so they drove around up to here, and then Rover exited the vehicle at H13, so Rover's gonna pop out here, and Watcher exited the vehicle at H15, so Watcher's popping out there, and the Judge stayed put in the car for now. So turn two, Panther moves to E3, so I moved around this way. Tracker continued to drive the car up to M9, so around this corner here, and then exited the vehicle at M8, up there. Rover then moved to E11, so Rover's heading out this way. The judge exited the vehicle at L9. And Watcher moved down to G17 and placed a camera in this intersection facing east. So now this camera is covering the view all down this road over here. Turn 3. Panther now moves to C6. The judge at this point used their clairvoyance ability to sense in a northeasterly direction. So they're looking in this corner of the board to see if they sense the agent here. Of course they don't, which that gives them now a pretty good idea that the agent is going to be in this section here. So with that knowledge, Tracker now moves to I5. So Tracker's here moves to I5. Rover now moves to B8. So, getting frighteningly close to me already on turn three. And Watcher goes to H22 with his extra fast road movement all the way down to here. Now we're at turn four, and already I'm feeling the squeeze here. So what I did was I moved to A9, and Agents are allowed to move through pets, so that's what I ended up having. Well, I sort of skirted past Rover here, I suppose, to A9. But in the process, Rover has seen me and starts barking. So in, to indicate the fact that Rover's barking, I'm going to place this cube with Rover. And now the hunters know that I am right somewhere close to Rover here, which isn't great for me. But what they end up doing here now is Tracker moves to F9. So Tracker heads over down to here. Rover goes to B11. Right, basically to guard this supply cache space to prevent me from going on there and grabbing some cool gear. Um, the judge moves to H13. So judge kind of walks through here to H13. And watcher now moves to H25 and places a camera facing north now. So the watcher takes one of his cameras and now is covering this entire road with his camera. Turn five. Now, I uh, am moving to B12 
just next to Rover here, which means that Rover is still barking furiously. And Tracker, at this point, I'm sort of forgetting how quickly you can move with the diagonal movement because it wouldn't you know it tracker actually moves one two three four directly on top of panther so with that panther takes an automatic hit point and I am obviously seen and discovered already here on turn five so now Rover, of course, moves down on top of Panther as well, rolls the die and rolls higher than a three and takes another bite out of me. So now I've got two hits already. The Judge moves to D5, so D, sorry, is it D15, I should say. So the Judge moves down here and the Watcher moves to M25 continuing to play the long game with the watcher. This is a very clever move on the part of my friend who's playing the hunters, getting these cameras positioned in the most optimal way to cover as many of these roads as possible, so to really hinder my movement. So now we're on turn six and I'm already feeling pretty nervous. I've got two out of six hit points already, and I haven't even gotten to my first objective. So, what do I do here on turn six? I move Panther to D8. So, that would be... Oh, here I decided I would double back, try to confuse the hunters, hopefully, get out of trouble for a minute. So I am no longer visible. And my last scene token is placed on the space that I just left from. Rover is no longer barking because I am now out of sight. However, the judge uses clairvoyance and now senses in a northeasterly direction to maybe get a feel for where I might have gone. However, since I'm due north of the judge, the judge does not sense anything. Unfortunately, this does give them a lot of information because I have to only be in this kind of little sliver of the board. Had I crossed the road, Tracker or the judge would have likely seen something. I guess they would have seen something, so they know I have to be in kind of this area of the board, unfortunately, because now, with that information, Tracker backtracks, and wouldn't you know it, again, Tracker, lands directly on top of Panther, dealing yet another automatic hit point. Now I'm at three hit points out of six already. And Rover does the same thing, runs to join us at D8. Rolls to see if he bites me. Thankfully this time he misses. And Watcher moves to Q25 and sets up yet another camera, this time facing west, to cover this road here, which as I said is super smart for the long game. So, turn seven now. I finally decide to use some equipment, so I take one of my smoke grenades and I toss that out to G9. So there's now a smoke grenade landing here. I use these glass bead tokens to indicate all the spaces that are obscured by smoke. The hunters are able to still move through those spaces, but they cannot see through them because of the smoke. So I've thrown my grenade out here, but I now head down to B12, hoping that they'll think that I ran to the street or perhaps up in a northerly direction continuing to double back um, instead I've tried to use that as a distraction and head south so we'll see how all that worked for me um, I, I'm no longer seen and the last scene marker is placed on D8 where I have just left from tracker now moves to E11 to cover that area where the smoke is Rover heads to D6 just to kind of get this area covered. The judge moves to, 
Unfortunately, B13, right in front of me, obviously immediately sees me, uh, takes the easy shot, of course hits me again for my fourth hit point. And because of the judge's uh, special ability, the judgment ability, not only do I take a hit point, but Panther also becomes fatigued, which means that I can no longer use Panther's special ability until I move two spaces or fewer in a turn in order to take a rest and remove the fatigue. So now I am hit again and fatigued by the judge and Watcher mute moves to Q20. So Watcher is now heading up this direction. Turn 8. Now my smoke obviously has not worked for me thanks to the judge here. I should have probably hidden over an A11 instead of making myself visible here in B12. That was a bit of a mistake on my part. But I now am forced to use another piece of equipment. So this time I use my smoke dagger which has two uses. So I'll mark the fact that I have one use remaining with my red cube here. And I use that smoke dagger in order to remove the judge's vision for this turn. And with that I move Panther to A16. So yes, now I'm crossing the road, taking advantage of that temporary blindness to cross the road, get over here. And I leave my last scene token now on B12 where I just left. And the smoke clears. So the judge now, although she is blinded temporarily, she does use her clairvoyance now to sense in a southeasterly direction. So basically everything from here to here she is sensing. And because I'm just out of that reach, she doesn't sense anything, which is maybe even worse because that really leaves a narrow area where I could possibly be. And Tracker now moves to D15, so Tracker must know that I'm down in this area now. Rover heads over to C8, so Rover starts heading down this way. And I guess stays up here in case I've stuck around up in this little area up in here. Watcher moves to N16, so Watcher's rounding this corner up here. Now we're at turn nine. I move Panther to B18. So as much as I'd love to keep hightailing it south, I decide I will stick around in this area because I have an objective here that I would like to hit before I carry on. Now, that was a tough decision because what I could have done was ignore that objective and carry on running south because you need to hit three of your four objectives and then escape the game to win as the agent. So I could have gambled and bypassed that objective knowing then that I would have to hit my three remaining objectives. But I decided to instead, even though I'm super low on hit points already, hang out here to get that objective. Anyhow, after that, Tracker uses his catch the scent ability which means that I now have to tell Tracker if Panther is closer to Tracker or closer to Rover which is hugely important and you can see what a cool ability it is for the hunters because I have to now indicate that Panther is closer to Tracker which means that I have not hung up in this area and now it's known that I'm down in this small area over here. So Rover now heads down to E12. Watcher moves to J17 now. So Watcher heads over here. The Judge moves to A16 which is over here. So I'm still hidden but again really get feeling the squeeze here. Now turn 10 I announce that an objective has been sabotaged at B17 so 
this objective just north of my location has been reached and knowing that the hunters can remove some of these objective cubes because the objective in this section was the one I hit at B17. Obviously I'm not going to be hitting any of the other objectives in that section. So after I hit that objective, I moved to C22. So now I hightail it out of here as fast as I can. Head on south. Now you'll see that it wasn't a great idea because the judge moves to A20, which isn't horrible, down here. The, um, the tracker moves to E19, which is on the other side here, so feeling pretty sandwiched. Rover moves to C16, and because this is a long alleyway here, can see me and starts barking again. Now, this is a bit of a blessing in disguise as you will see here um, even though I should have maybe ducked behind one of these buildings instead of leaving myself open in this long alley this ends up working out in my favor and I'll show you how this plays out for me watcher now moves to H14 up to here and it is turn 11 okay at this point I decide I'm going to use a stealth field card. So I rotate a card to indicate that it's being used, but don't show it. And now the hunters know that there are only two types of cards that act in this manner, where they're rotated but not revealed. The stealth field and the adrenal surge, which means I'm either moving very quickly or I'm moving very sneakily. In this case, I'm trying to be sneaky because I then move to E26. I went one, two, three, four all the way down to E26. The reason I use Stealth Field is because it also blocks vision from the cameras. So the main reason I used it was to shut down this camera vision, prevent them from seeing that I have now crossed the road into the bottom section of the map. So at this point Rover is no longer barking because I have gone out of sight. And Tracker now moves to D15. So up to here now here is where i have a temporary reprieve because there's a weird little board art situation where there's a tree kind of overlapping space c17 and my friend that i was playing with thought that because the tree was overlapping this space they didn't notice the grid letter and number on here and thought that this was an actual obstacle so they thought that rover was barking at something in this row here and didn't realize that this was not an obstacle and that rover could in fact see this entire row so it was actually kind of an obscured board space that saved me which isn't the greatest but i mean i'll take what i can get at this point having fallen so far behind already so let me see here. Uh, tracker had moved to D15. Rover moves to B12. So Rover is heading back up to here and trying to cover this area, thinking that I must have doubled back up this road here. Watcher moves to E11. So Watcher is going up there. And the judge goes to E18. So they're all heading back up north again because not realizing that I could have been south of them. So now at turn 12, I can finally take a bit of a breath as I move all the way down to E30, which is this supply cache location, meaning that next turn I can pick up a piece of equipment. So Judge uses clairvoyance now to sense in a northeasterly direction, wondering if I've kind of snuck out this way and senses nothing out here. Watcher map now heads to D7. So let's see, Watcher keeps heading north, thinking I must be continuing to double back this way. Tracker moves to A11, so Tracker comes around to here. And Rover heads up to C8. And at this point, the hunters are very confused as to why they haven't caught any hints of me yet, thinking that they must have me cornered up here. 
However, on turn 13, I reveal that I am picking up a supply cache item. So I don't say which supply cache I'm picking up from. Um, I'm guessing the hunters must think that I have somehow gotten out to here or maybe even this space somehow, but what happens is I draw a card desperately hoping that I've gotten a med kit to heal one of my hit points, but in fact what I ended up drawing was a portable barrier, which I hang on to for now and see if that might come in useful later on in the game. After picking up that item, I move Panther over to I-31, so I keep running this way. And the judge uses clairvoyance again, this time descends in a southeasterly direction. And this time they do sense my character in that space, which really throws them for a loop because they are wondering how on earth I could have gotten south of them. But there you go, Watcher now moves to H9 out to here. Tracker moves to E14. And Rover moves to G10. So now the hunters are going, how on earth did the agent manage to get down that way? But at turn 14, I indicate that I have hit an objective at I-30. So this objective just north of me has been hit. And that means that these objective cubes from that area are removed. And now, I sort of explain to my friend what has happened and at that point is when my friend indicates to me that they thought that this had been a blocked space and so we realize where this confusion has happened and obviously they know I'm right in this area now and that they have to run to catch up to me again. So Watcher gets into the vehicle at M9 here, hops into the car. The judge moves to I-19. Tracker heads to H-17. And Rover goes to K-13. So Rover is heading into this supply cache area. Turn 15. I head over to Q-31, which is... Uh, A good question. Where's Q31? H I J K. Is that even possible? No, I must have skipped a turn. Oh, after I hit the objective uh, at I30, I had then moved to M32. That's what I forgot. I had moved out to the road after hitting the objective, and now on turn 15, I carry on moving this way to Q31 which is out here. Watcher now is in the vehicle and drives the vehicle down to Q19. So this fast interceptor that can move 12 spaces heads around the corner, stops here. Watcher exits at Q20 and of all the bad luck, this alleyway here extends from the road and from this point here on the road watcher can see all the way down to where I'm standing and hi I am now visible to the watcher. One thing that we have realized at this point is that this map is very different from the base game map. In the base game once you were off the road into these kind of little alleyways there was a lot of tight little nooks and crannies that you could hide out in but on this map there's all these really long alleyways that even if you're off the road there's potential that the hunters can see you from a bit of a distance even once you're off the main routes here. So. Watcher, of course, takes a really long range shot, doesn't roll a six to roll again, and it misses me. The judge now moves to M22. Tracker moves to H21. Rover moves to O14. And it is turn 16. I move Panther to S30, so I leave my last scene token here, 
and had just two spaces to here and I am hidden now and since I only moved two spaces I can finally remove my fatigue I tell the hunters that my fatigue is removed which means they know I only moved one or two or zero potentially spaces and now it also means that I have access to Panther's special ability again so watcher moves to U20 which is over here to look down this alleyway now. Watcher now takes the camera from G17 and moves it to his current location facing south down this alleyway here to hinder my movement even further. Judge heads over to O25 to look down this long alleyway. Tracker goes to J25 and roll over to Q18. <laughs> we also had a brief discussion as to whether a pet could drive the vehicle and of course that's not possible. 17 now. I indicate that my third and final objective has been sabotaged at T31. Right here, which means we can now remove the remaining objective cubes from the board. I no longer have any more objectives to hit. I simply have to get all the way back north again and get out of here with only two hit points remaining. After I hit the objective, I promptly hurl my second smoke grenade onto space P27 in order to obscure the view of a couple of these alleyways. So we've got smoke showing up here. And then I run the opposite direction to V27. Again, to hopefully put that decoy out there, maybe make them think I'm trying to head around this way. But, uh, let's see what happens. Let's see if they fall for it. Tracker goes to L28. So tracker's here, L28. So tracker wants to cover this route out, the, out here. Rover goes to S21. Watcher to U24. So watcher is covering this route here in case I am doubling back. And the judge goes to R28. R28. So the judge runs through the smoke and pops out here. So, as you can see, the judge is now covering this alleyway. Watcher is covering this alleyway. Feeling super cornered here. And then, of course, we have Rover on the road up here. Turn 18. I go to V23 which is kind of a little roundabout around Watcher. The smoke clears after I move. Tracker, once again, here's where the combos of a couple of the Hunter players come into play because first of all, Tracker uses the Catch the Sense to see whether I am closer to Tracker or closer to Rover, which again is gonna be a hugely important information because it's gonna tell them if I use the smoke to head this way or if I double back to here. Of course, I have to tell the hunters that I'm actually closer to Rover, which is not what I wanna be telling them at this point. So Rover stays put on 21 to cover this road having gotten that information. So Rover stays there. Good boy, Rover, good stay, good boy. Judge uses clairvoyance now. Here's where the combos of the hunters come into play. So. Judge now senses in a northeasterly direction from here. So the judge is sensing up here and does sense the agent. So between those two abilities, they've got me narrowed down to a very small location here. And with that, Watcher moves to W26, which 
it is around this corner here and is now looking up an alleyway past another little slightly obscured tree location but um, that now they have this alleyway covered the road covered and again I'm just feeling so much tension here heading into turn 19. Now I use my second stealth field so once again, I rotate a card to indicate that an ability is being used. Again, it's either going to be the Adrenal Surge or Stealth Field. Um, I'm using that to move sneakily to T19. So my main goal here was to cross the road without being seen by Rover because with a stealth field, the pets cannot see me. So I've used that to cross that important barrier to me here. Now Judge uses clairvoyance once again to again sense in a northeasterly direction, does sense that I'm still up in that general area. So tracker moves to 024 around here. Rover go to U17, actually right up here Fortunately, isn't barking at me though. Watcher goes to U22. U22, which is here. And it is turn 20. We're at the halfway point in terms of the turn limit on the game. So lots of time for me to get out if I can do so without taking more hits. So I now go up to R15 and feeling a little good that I'm starting to get ahead of the hunters here. Tracker goes to P20. Rover to W14. So Rover's going up here, which is not great because now this little road is covered. And because of the interceptor's ability, if I were to step onto the road, even if Tracker wasn't there watching, I would set off the car alarm. But let's see, Rover moved to W14. Watcher is now hopping back into the vehicle. So Watcher is back in the car. And the judge, for the third turn in a row, uses clairvoyance in a northeasterly direction to, I guess, ensure that I haven't taken advantage of that stealth field to cross to the west side of this major road and does sense that... Oh no, this time nothing is sensed because I'm due north of the judge. So nothing is actually sensed in this area here. Now, turn 21 was... Not a good turn for old Panther. So, what I did was I moved to U11. So now I am up here. From here, I am uh, only two turns from an exit, which, and I'm well ahead of the three hunters. So, I'm feeling pretty confident about my ability to walk off the board even if I take one more hit and I'm sitting here with my portable barrier in hand thinking this is a fun card that I've never had a chance to use before because it's an expansion element and I really kind of want to use it before I go running off the exit so I think I'm gonna go ahead and build a barrier now at this point I'm the hunters don't know where I am. I'm well ahead of them on the map and I'm close to an exit, but I essentially give away my location by building the barrier next to me at U12, essentially telling them I'm standing here at U11. And you'll, can see, you'll see in a second how this is doubly a problem for me. But yeah, that was a big bungled move on my part. The other thing that comes up as soon as I build the barrier is can people move diagonally between a barrier and an obstacle? And we decide to rule that that diagonal movement is not allowed. I'm gonna to have to maybe ask on the forums about that, but it would really reduce the effectiveness of this barrier if that sort of diagonal movement was allowed. There wouldn't be a lot of useful 
purposes for a barrier, I suppose. So we ruled that that movement would not be allowed. And knowing that, Tracker gets into the vehicle at Q19 with the Watcher. Rover heads to S14. So heads around this way. Watcher now drives this fast interceptor car all the way to T9 and then exits the vehicle at U9 says oh hi panther takes a shot at me of course hits me from that close range so now I've only got one hit point left and the judge moves uh, to Q24 so Q24 so heading into turn 22 now whereas a turn ago things looked fantastic for me now I'm standing here with a barrier behind me so I can only move forward where these two hunters are standing so yeah now I'm really kicking myself I use my final piece of equipment which is the second use of my smoke dagger in order to blind watcher and with that I move to V7 however tracker who is still in the car here is not blinded so I have to place my last scene token and here's where I actually screwed up a rule aspect so I decided that I would place use the Panthers a special ability which is shadow step I use shadow step to place my last scene marker one space away from where I would normally place it and I put it at V9 to hopefully make them think that I have sort of rounded the corner to the southeast here but I actually cheated in unintentionally in doing so because I moved four spaces and that special ability can only be used if I move three or fewer spaces so unfortunately it makes the hunters think that I've remained in this kind of southerly area which is what I wanted them to think but I did so somewhat illegally so tracker exits the vehicle at T8 Rover goes to W13 and I think it's probably confused as to why I can't be seen at this point given that information Watcher oh at this point I'm not seen so Watcher walks over to W6 and with one turn away from exiting the board just goes ahead and blocks that exit the judge moves to Q20 up to here. All right. And on turn 23 now, there's my friend asks about this moving forward and using my special ability. And at that point, we realize that I have, in fact, cheated. And I tell them I have moved for and use my ability. So I sort of do a self-imposed punishment I guess by not moving by remaining in place at V7 here and although I don't specifically announce that I haven't moved so tracker goes to S4 which is up here rover goes to V9 and begins barking furiously because Rover can see me. So the judge moves to Q16, continues to walk up the road, and the watcher remains firmly planted in front of that exit that I would so like to walk out of. With that exit being blocked, I would actually have to come back either to here, here, or here in order to exit the board, which is quite a long walk with only one hit point remaining. So on turn 24, I moved to W10. Oh, 
So I walk around here. Um, Rover still barking away, of course, as I walk right past him. Tracker moves to V7. Tracker V7. So because the dog's still barking, Tracker's coming this way. Rover goes to W12 and is still madly barking, saying, over here, over here. The judge goes to U14. So now the judge is coming in. And Watcher now decides to leave this exit space, knowing that I'm back south, goes one, two, three, four, lands on top of Panther, and with that, my last remaining hit point is gone, and I am defeated. So, after all of the diligent work on behalf of the Watcher, placing all those cameras, at the very end of the game, he comes along, blocks the exit, does the last two hit points on me, and is the hero of the game. So, that was it. We finished with me just trying to exit the board you can see what a monumental error it was to place that barrier there although to be fair it was a mistaken barrier that allowed me to get that far to begin with chances are the game could have been over much sooner had that space been more clear but we both really enjoyed this new addition to the game as i said the hunter abilities are amazing the agent abilities are eh, they're okay and the new items are pretty fun so all in all this broken covenant expansion is one that really takes an amazing game and just really elevates it even more so thanks for watching that hope you got a feel for what this broken covenant expansion adds to the game and that's all i have to say about that Holy cow, you made it to the end of this video. That really does mean a lot to me. The other thing that means a lot to me is if you would give it a thumb up or subscribe to my channel, or maybe share this video with one person that you think would enjoy it. Cheers. So anyways. <clears throat> and other things I'll mention as they come, as they come up. And if anything, <clears throat> And this little movement track and all oh, the whole screen. Oh my god.